Pancake everyone! It's well known that all dinosaurs disappeared from our planet due to massive meteorite impact. But did you know that this wasn't the only max extinction event on Earth? Something happened 2.5 million years ago that you might not even be aware of. Today we are going on an unusual journey back in time to learn about the entire path of evolution on our planet, from the emergence of life to the present day. Enjoy the ride! In order for life to appear in its various forms on Earth, the planet itself had to first form. According to a popular theory, about 15 billion years ago, a small and very hot object in space suddenly exploded. This event is known as the Big Bang, and it gave rise to multiple galaxies, stars and planetary systems, including our own, the solar system. Eight large bodies orbit the main star, each with a unique composition, size and mass, although their formation is more or less the same scientifically. How did this happen? After the formation of the Sun, a huge cloud of gas and dust remained, which gradually merged into larger objects due to gravitational interaction. And then these larger space objects began to collide and merge again until planets formed. Only the strongest objects survived this tough battle, whose gravitational field was able to clear the space around their orbit. But the process of forming Earth didn't stop there. Substances of different densities separated and moved within the planet to create the core, mantle and crust. It all started over 4.5 billion years ago. During this long period, significant changes in the geological and climatic conditions of the Earth occurred multiple times. Therefore, scientists distinguish several stages of Earth's development called eras. Let's see what metamorphosis exactly happened to our planet. During the first 500 million years of its existence, the Earth resembled a huge lifeless ball of molten lava. The air on the planet was very hot and toxic, containing a huge amount of dangerous gases such as ammonia, chlorine and hydrogen, and the level of radiation exceeded all permissible limits for life. It is believed that about 4 billion years ago, even before the oldest era on our planet, the Archean era, the Earth collided with a fairly large celestial body and released into space material that later turned into the Moon. Our planet began to gradually cool down and water, previously in the form of steam, began to settle on the surface. Heavy rains fell everywhere, oceans, seas and lakes were formed. The formation of the Moon contributed to the circulation of water on the surface and its purification. Thus, the first life originated in the depth of the oceans and seas. These were the most optimal conditions for its appearance. At first, single-celled organisms emerged, in cells of which there was no formed nucleus – archaea and bacteria. They could survive in the most extreme conditions and fed on chemical compounds. In addition, they were capable of metabolism and reproduction and therefore were able to survive and became the basis of the development of all life on Earth. Interestingly, can these bacteria be called our distant ancestors? Because what we will learn next gives a rather ambiguous answer to this question. The first bacteria appeared. Then, for a whole billion years on our planet, no significant processes related to evolution took place. It was only 2.5 billion years ago, at the intersection of two eras, Archaean and Proterozoic, that improved bacteria capable of photosynthesis emerged. These bacteria were able to convert carbon dioxide into oxygen and began actively releasing oxygen, saturating the oceans and atmosphere of our planet. These single-celled bacteria, called cyanobacteria, influenced the improvement of conditions for the development of life on Earth. However, these new bacteria reproduced too quickly and released a huge amount of oxygen into the surface of the Earth, resulting in an oxygen catastrophe that changed the composition of the atmosphere. It was during this period that a large number of diverse aerobic organisms, those that need oxygen to survive, appeared. Meanwhile, anaerobic organisms practically disappeared. This was the first mass extinction of living organisms on our planet, and it was far from the last. Now an ozone layer predominated on Earth, significantly reducing the greenhouse effect, cooling the planet and turning it into a snowball. This period, which began 2.4 billion years ago, was called the Huronian glaciation. It is one of the oldest and most prolonged glaciations on Earth, lasting more than 300 million years. Can you imagine? 300 million years in the snow. It seems like such prolonged cold should have permanently ended life on our planet. However, some organisms still managed to survive. Firstly, they were able to adapt to the new conditions. 
Secondly, there are still places on the planet with not very thick ice. And it was there that some organisms managed to survive the prolonged winter. In fact, this resilient bacteria not only managed to survive, but also transform. By the end of the Proterozoic era, there was a great diversity of different organisms on our planet. The period is called the Avalon Explosion, and it is not entirely clear why this explosion even happened. During this era, kingdoms of plants, animals, and fungi emerged. The first multicellular organisms appeared. Colantrids, sponges, algae, and ancestors of trilobites. These organisms turned out to be much more complex than their single-celled predecessors and began to occupy new ecological niches. In subsequent periods, evolution began to develop in huge leaps. For example, the Paleozoic period lasted only about 300 million years, but managed to become one of the most important periods of evolution on the planet. During this time, animals and plants made such a huge evolutionary leap in development that probably hasn't happened before or since. A huge variety of animals and plants appeared during this period, and many of them became extinct in the same short period. 550 million years ago, most of the Earth was covered by seas and oceans, and at this stage, the development of many life forms was taking place. Another explosion of biodiversity happened, the Cambrian. Various marine animals appeared, corals, marine insects, and trilobites. It was during this period that animals first acquired shells, armor, and mineral skeletons. Strange and intricate forms of marine dwellers appeared, such as Morella, Opabinia, Tulimonstrum, and even an animal with an unusual name of Hallucigenia. When Charles Doolittle Walcott, the discoverer of the latter, first saw its fossils, he was very surprised and thought he was hallucinating. With its eight pairs of thin legs, spines protruding from its back, and a head and a tail that were practically indistinguishable from each other, Hallucigenia is a strange animal with an unusual name. It's interesting that during the Cambrian period, animals developed not only various mineral structures, but also eyes. This allowed predators to see their prey and for prey to see their hunters. One of the earliest chordate creatures on the planet, Hycoichthys, had gills and a simple intestine, a circulatory system, a brain, and eyes, all 520 million years ago. During the Paleozoic era, significant changes in the climate occurred, resulting in the Earth being covered with dense forests. While aquatic creatures or fish evolved in the sea, plants and animals for other classes were already emerging on land. For example, arthropods, namely insects, began to populate our planet actively. They were, in fact, of enormous size. Nowadays, we are used to seeing ants, bees, and dragonflies as small creatures. But the wingspan of the ancient dragonfly Meganeura reached a whole meter. By the end of the Paleozoic era, the first vertebrate animals appeared on Earth. One of the first animals that are classified not as fish but as amphibians were Ichthyostega. They lived about 365 million years ago, with their body length reaching 1 meter and their legs having 7 toes. And although Ichthyostega already had legs instead of fins, they still had difficulty moving on land and live a semi-aquatic lifestyle. And then amphibians and reptiles started to appear. It was a very important step in the development of life because it opened the door to the future appearance of dinosaurs and mammals. But at the end of the Paleozoic era, one of the most massive extinctions in the history of Earth occurred, known as the Permian Extinction. It was the third extinction event on our list. About 95 people of animal and plant species died as a result of this event, which was caused by many factors, including changes in climate and geological processes. The planet had to start almost from scratch. After the Permian Extinction, only the smallest animals remained on Earth. But after just 50 million years, the entire Earth was populated by giant dinosaurs. This is why the Mesozoic era is called the Age of Dinosaurs. They appeared, spread out and disappeared from our planet during this time, spanning 168 million years. Such a short period of time compared to everything we have considered before. The Mesozoic era is divided into three periods. The Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous. The first of these is known for the breakup of the supercontinent of Pangaea, which eventually led to the formation of modern continents. 
The first mammals appeared in the Triassic period, although they were tiny and not very developed. They led an active lifestyle, mainly at night. The seas of the Triassic period were filled with ammonites and sea urchins. Madriporic corals appeared, which are the richest in species among corals today. Numerous archosaurs, ancient reptiles including dinosaurs and pterosaurs, emerged in land. The second most famous period of the Mesozoic era, the Jurassic, is characterized as the time of dinosaur prosperity and the emergence of the first birds. Significant changes in climate occurred on Earth during the Jurassic period, including the emergence of territories with dry and hot climates. These made conditions favorable for dinosaurs. Therefore, their population reached its peak. Thousands of different species of these reptiles emerged, each with its own peculiarities of structure and existence. The last Cretaceous period lasted about 80 million years. Significant changes occurred in the world of animals and vegetation during this time. The first flowering plants appeared. The number of mammals increased significantly, although they didn't play any significant role in the planet's life. By then, the Earth was already practically similar to the modern one. Continents, oceans and mountain ranges had formed. And then the dinosaurs became extinct. This is the fourth extinction in our journey into the past. There are several hypotheses about why dinosaurs disappeared from our planet. The most widely accepted theory is that of the collision of the Earth with a giant asteroid. The collision occurred on the Yucatan Peninsula in the Gulf of Mexico. The meteorite had a diameter of about 10 kilometers. Its length was so enormous that when one part of it touched the water in the Gulf, the other part was still in the upper layers of the atmosphere. After its fall, a crater with a diameter of 160 kilometers was formed. However, not all scientists believe that even such a strong collision could have destroyed so many species of animals in such a short time. Some scientists support the theory of disease migration. Due to the lowering of the ocean level 66 million years ago, some land bridges were formed between continents. Animals began to migrate from one part of the land to another, along with their parasites and diseases. Since the immunity of animals from one continent is not adapted to diseases and parasites from another, even an unlethal disease for an animal from Asia, for example, could be fatal for an animal from America. These led to massive epidemics. However, the possibility of the extinction of so many species of animals due to parasite migration is extremely low. Soon animals would have adapted to the diseases. In general, the well-known story about the meteorite could actually be something else. The important thing is that despite the extinction of the dinosaurs, mammals and other living organisms survived and continued to evolve into the next era, the Cenozoic. The Cenozoic era is the current period in Earth's history which has been going on for over 66 million years. We are living in this era right now. The beginning of this period is characterized by the rise of mammals. They became the dominant life forms on Earth, occupying the ecological niches left empty after the extinction of the dinosaurs. Many well-known animals appeared during this period, such as elephants, lions, tigers, whales, dolphins, and primates, as well as many other egg-laying and marsupial mammals. Vegetation also quickly recovered after the catastrophe. Within 5 million years, the entire Earth was covered in jungles and swamps. During this period, continental drift continued and unique communities of plants and animals formed on each of them. The climate became more continental and ice caps formed on the poles. It seems that everything was shaping up favorably for the planet's numerous inhabitants. But about 2.5 million years ago, the very event we spoke about at the beginning of the video occurred on Earth. A long ice age began. Over the course of 2 million years, the planet underwent many cycles of very cold and relatively warm periods of time. During the cold periods, which lasted about 40,000 years, continents were invaded by glaciers. In the warmer periods, the ice retreated and sea levels rose. Many animals in the cold regions of the planet, such as mammoths and wolverinosauruses, developed thick fur coats and a thick layer of subcutaneous fat. Herds of deer and horses grazed on their plains, hunted by cave lions and other predators. Approximately 180,000 years ago, humans began to hunt these animals, first the Neanderthals and then modern humans. Many large animals could not adapt to the sharp fluctuations in climate or the influence of humans and went extinct. 
About 10,000 years ago, the ice age ended and the climate on Earth became warmer and wetter. This led to a rapid increase in the human population and the spread of humans across the globe. They learned to till the land and grow crops. Initially, small agricultural communities grew into cities, and after a few thousand years, humanity became a global society using all the achievements of high technology. However, many species of animals that humans have shared the planet with for centuries have been pushed to the brink of extinction. That is why scientists often talk about how human actions have caused a new mass extinction of species on Earth. Today we are in the Cenozoic era and continue to contribute to the changing environment. Some scientists call this period the Anthropocene. It began in the late 18th century and continues to this day. During this period, human influence on the planet became more noticeable and many changes occurred in the environment, including climate change, water and air pollution, deforestation and biodiversity loss. Nevertheless, significant scientific discoveries and technological breakthroughs have been made during this period that have allowed humanity to better understand our planet. That is the long and complex path that the planet Earth has traveled from its formation to the present day. Processes that occurred millions and billions of years ago have influenced our lives and existence, and now humanity influences the development of life on the planet. It is important to remember that the Earth is unique and that we must take care of the environment to preserve its richness and diversity of life. Thank you for watching.